Biden lets Ukraine strike Russia with U.S. weapons while Ukraine attacks Russian nuclear defenses. Well, it finally happened. Biden is now letting Ukraine strike Russian territory with U.S. supplied weapons. Escalations in nuclear brinkmanship, which would have been unthinkable a few short years ago, are becoming increasingly common as Ukraine loses more and more territory and runs out of soldiers to fight. In a new report from Politico titled, Biden secretly gave Ukraine permission to strike inside Russia with U.S. weapons, which cites multiple anonymous U.S. officials, the article's authors correctly described the new White House authorization as a, quote, stunning shift the administration initially said would escalate the war by more directly involving the U.S. in the fight, end quote. This report comes shortly after an article by the New York Times titled, From Allies and Advisors, Pressure Grows on Biden to Allow Attacks on Russian Territory, in which David E. Sanger accurately forecast that Biden is edging toward what may prove to be one of his most consequential decisions in the war for Ukraine, whether to reverse his ban on shooting American weapons into Russian territory. Politico reports that the approval of these attacks is limited to solely near the area of Kharkiv, but, again, these escalations were once unthinkable, even for this administration, and every time a new escalation is authorized, the warmongers are already well on their way to pushing for a further one. We will surely see increasing calls for Biden to authorize U.S.-backed strikes deeper into Russian territory in the coming weeks. This new development comes just after we learned that Ukraine has been repeatedly attacking Russia's early warning systems for incoming nuclear strikes, with Ukrainian drones targeting Russian radar sites hundreds of miles from Ukrainian-controlled territory. Just a few years ago, if I had told you that a NATO proxy would soon be attacking Russia's nuclear defense infrastructure, you'd probably have assumed we'd be pretty close to another Cuban Missile Crisis-level nuclear standoff, and that it would be receiving high levels of alarm and attention. But this report is barely in the news, and hardly anyone in the West even knows it's happening. This also comes as Reuters reports that France is preparing to send several hundred troops to Ukraine to train Ukrainian forces, which of course means we may soon be seeing the armed forces of a NATO power getting killed by the Russian military. Any of these three new developments has the potential to lead to unpredictable events which spiral out of control into a nuclear war between NATO and the Russian Federation, which would be the single worst thing that could possibly happen on planet Earth. There is no excuse for anyone to be playing around anywhere remotely close to such a precipice. And yet here we are. As we discussed last year, the terrifying thing about the West's pattern of continually escalating against Russia every time it doesn't get a nuclear ICBM to the kisser for the last escalation naturally incentivizes Russia to attack NATO directly in order to re-establish its credibility for deterrence. So far, Russia has been content to respond to NATO's escalations by just tearing into Ukraine with greater and greater ferocity. But if the Western Empire keeps interpreting every time Russia doesn't attack NATO forces directly as a sign that it's safe to keep escalating, at some point Russia's going to have to hit NATO. It is not sane or acceptable that any of this is happening. The Empire knowingly provoked this war, and now it's getting more and more casual about risking the life of everyone on this planet as its proxy runs out of lives to throw into its gears. And it's just so hard to draw attention to this, because there are so many other horrible things happening in the world which the Western Empire is also directly responsible for. The Empire is increasingly acting like a wounded, cornered animal as China rises and the U.S. slowly sinks into post-primacy, the only major difference being that wounded, cornered animals have teeth and claws instead of weapons of Armageddon.